y'all welcome to my channel or welcome back if you are new here thank you so much for joining us if you are returning you already know it you are fabulous all right guys so for this video i am so excited these are my top 10 fall diys that i have ever done on this channel i've actually never put together a compilation video and i wanted to do one for y'all from the fall diys that i had done in the past so that's what we're going to be doing today i am very excited to bring these back some of these just turned out absolutely fantastic i love each and every one of them and they are so so simple to do guys and they are very inexpensive to make so why don't we just jump right in? Alrighty, so for this first one, I've got a wooden looking charger plate that I picked up at the Dollar General Store for $1. I've got one of the chunky wood rounds from the Dollar Tree, a candlestick from the Dollar Tree, and then these three jars that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. And y'all, when I saw these, I remember this very clearly. The second that I saw these, I was like, oh, pumpkins. Totally pumpkins. Definitely, I'm keeping these for fall. I have got ivory, celery, and pumpkin, antique, and also, I believe it is white, uh, chalk paint, all from Waverly. Now, I painted my jars, one with the ivory, one with the pumpkin, and then one with the celery color. I just wanted a good mix of the different colors, the different fall colors, pumpkin colors, whatnot. And then I painted the lids with burnt umber from Apple Barrel. Um, now, when I got done, I took my brush, I took a chip brush, got some of that burnt umber on it and just flicked it with my finger just to add some little spots, you know, make it look a little more like a actual pumpkin. I don't know if pumpkins have spots or not, but in my head, it just, it just worked. Okay. So that's what we did. So I just added a little bit to my brush and then I would just flick it with my finger and it went everywhere. Now, let me tell you something. It's very messy. I will say that. I then took an emery board, and I usually keep one of these on hand. I pick these up at the Dollar Tree, and they are perfect for little projects like this where you're just going to use it to kind of distress something. So I just went around and distressed these pumpkins kind of in the grooves that the jar actually made itself. That's where I kind of distressed at. Now, I've got my lids, and I'm going to take some... Um, uh, well, I went blank, guys. I'm going to take some nautical rope from the Dollar Tree. I took one piece, added a little bit of hot glue, and then I just kind of twisted it together. Just kind of glued the, glued it together. What we're making is like the stem of the pumpkin. Super simple. You could do this any way you wanted to. And actually, I kind of did it different each time I made one. So, this one is a little more put together. The next one, I kind of fray out the ends of it a little bit more. So it kind of lays on top of the uh, lid a little better, but it, it kind of looked a little different. So I liked that, that each stem would be, you know, a little different than the other one. So like I said, I just kind of frayed out the bottom of this one a little more, added a little hot glue and just smushed that dude right down onto the lid. Same thing for the other one. Now, once I had all of my stems on, I'm then going to take some of this lamb's ear that I've got. I went ahead and put my lids back on my jars, and then I'm taking a little bit of this lamb's ear that I pick up at Walmart. I feel like Walmart's got the best florals sometimes. Now, the Dollar General has been having some super nice florals here lately, but these actually came from Walmart. But I just added those to the top of these jars. I then took some of this pitberry garland that I had picked up at um, the Dollar Tree. I wound it around a pencil and just made like the little, I don't know, look tentacle looking things that come off of pumpkins, like the vine, I guess you would call it, not a tentacle. <laughs> That's an octopus. But anyways, y'all know what I meant. <laughs> I put my jars on the tr on the plate. Now, I added one to the candlestick, 
One is sitting flat on the plate and the other one is sitting on that chunky wood round that we had in the beginning. And then I just added in some florals and whatnot to this. I had some little pumpkin picks that I picked up from um, Walmart. Walmart always has the cutest, cutest fall picks and they're like 97 cents a piece, guys. So definitely a good place to get your florals. But all I did was just add in some florals to this plate and that was it. And I think this is so stinking pretty. Anything with cheetah in it is definitely going to be my favorite. <laughs> so I've got some like assorted pumpkins here, the cutouts. One of them came from the Dollar General store. The other ones came from the Dollar Tree. I've also got a 12 by 14 canvas that I got from Five Below. I've got one of these Buffalo Check um, bandana, dog bandanas from the Dollar Tree. And then I've got this cheetah shirt that no longer fit my daughter. And so, hey use it for a DIY, right? Duh. <laughs> All right, now I prepped my pumpkins, got everything off of them, took the hangers out, just got them ready because we're going to completely transform these pumpkins. All right, now I took that shirt, cut it long ways. That way I would, you know, be able to get one good strip off of there. I added Aileen's tacky glue to the front side of it, glued the um, material down to it, and then hot glued around the edges on the back. I then took the buffalo check one and added the um, bandana to it. Same way I added Aileen's tacky glue, glued it to the material, then cut the material around it, and then hot glued that around the edges. I did one of them with um, some burlap. I actually glued down the burlap and then, of course, put around the edges with the hot glue. I then took some twine, just Dollar Tree twine, and went around each stem on the pumpkins. Now, when it got to the ones to paint, I painted one with Pumpkin by Waverly and one with Ocean by Waverly. Now, I was going to add darker to the, the blue one, so that's why I went ahead and started out with that light color. Um, I did give each one two good coats. I When I got my second coat on the blue pumpkin, that's when I went in with my darker color. And all I did was just kind of smear it back and forth literally just blending it in. I then painted the orange one, and while my paint was wet, I took some brown acrylic paint. It is Burnt Umber by Apple Barrel, and I went around the outside edge of my pumpkin. I then went down the inside, just creating those lines. Now, I got my um, brush out that I had been painting that pumpkin orange with, got orange paint on it, and then just pulled down. I just simply pulled down with it. I'm gonna do the same thing with some yellow paint, get some of my orange back on my brush, pull down, wipe it off, pull down, wipe it off, and then smear a little. Just going back and forth. Y'all, that's super simple, and these pumpkins turned out gorgeous. <laughs> All right, now, I did add twine to the tops of these pumpkins also, to the stems, the orange one and the blue one. I did both of them, just secured it in the back. Now, I had this stem here that actually had little bitty pumpkins on it at one time, and I'd already used the pumpkins, but the leaves on it were perfect for this project. Then I had this stem here that I picked up at Walmart um, just recently, and it had cotton on it, but it had burlap leaves. And y'all, they were too perfect for this, this um, DIY. I wanted to kind of, I don't know, bring in a bunch of different elements into this particular piece. Like we've got the cheetah, you've got the burlap, you've got the buffalo check, you've got the blue that's really popular right now with the fall DIYs. And then of course you've got the traditional orange. So I really just wanted to be all over the board with this really. Like that was the look that I was going for. So, and I think that it turns out so stinking pretty. Like I am so in love with this piece. 
I'll, I definitely won't be getting rid of this one. <laughs> now, I took my, my canvas and I gave it one good coat of white Waverly chalk paint. Now, of course, it's already white, but I wanted that chalky finish. Because what we're going to do is create a shiplap, like look like, you know, shiplap. So, I took my ruler and a paint pen, a black paint pen that I picked up at Walmart, and I'm just going to draw out my lines. I did not measure these. They're not perfectly straight, but it's okay because it's farmhouse, so it does not have to be perfect. So, just give yourself some grace, like Miss Olivia says on Olivia's Romantic Home. Give yourself some grace and just enjoy it. That is the best thing about painting. Just enjoy it. You can fix it. I promise. Any mistake you make, you can always go back and fix it with paint. So, I then took um, the color Mineral and I just dry brushed over, right over the top of the lines, over the top of the, the boards that I had created. Just all over this. I just simply dry brushed all over this canvas. And this is just going to give it that, um, I don't know, dimension that it needs and, it, you know, give it the look of wood. So, once I was done with the mineral, I end up going in with the color um, ivory. You'll see here in just a second. And that just almost brings it to life. But with all these different lines on it, you know, that's what really makes it look like wood or whatever. But with it being shiplap, I wanted it to be like the lighter color, not the dark brown or whatever. I wanted it to be like weathered gray, you know, that kind of color. I also added in some silver lining and that is a beautiful color to uh, create these, this, um, the look that I'm going for here. Just the mineral, the silver lining, and the ivory. Those three colors together are gorgeous. All right, now, once I had my board ready, all my pumpkins are ready. They're all prepped. Everything's ready to go. I'm going to just play with it. I just moved them around. I took my cotton. I kind of moved it back and forth here and there until I finally <laughs> figured out exactly where I wanted to put them. I then just pulled everything off and began to hot glue the heck out of all of it. Just adding, I mean, I put a crap ton on the back of this one. Added that sucker to my board. Y'all, this is such a pretty DIY. Oh my gosh, I love that cheetah. I just cannot get over it. So in love with this. And I love that it's got a, a, you know, a little element of like everything in it right now. I love it. I added in the cotton and then I felt like it was just missing something. So I did go back in with some reindeer moss from the Dollar Tree and I just added that. And y'all, this is what left with. And I love it. Oh, I love it. I've got a set of these racetracks that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. Now, this DIY, I saw another creator kind of sort of make. Um, theirs was a little different than this, but it was same, still the same idea, okay? And I believe it was, um, she's so crafty. I'm not totally sure on that. So, if I can find the video, I will link it below. But I did get this from another um, creator. I got the uh, wooden plank there that you see. I picked that up at Walmart, and all I did was pull out the staples, pulled off the hanger, and then I also took a little bit of putty and filled in the holes. And then that finial knob, I picked that up at Hobby Lobby for like two bucks. I've got my white Waverly chalk paint, and I'm just going to give these racetracks... I believe it was like three good coats before I had it completely covered. I kind of dry brushed at the uh, finial finial cap, but I used my heat gun in between coats to dry it, but I did paint the front and the back. So, as you see there, solid painted white. 
I'm going to take some antique wax and just do it to it here. I'm going to put it all over uh, this racetrack. We're going to go back with a baby wipe and wipe it back off, but I really wanted this to have some distressing on it and to kind of make this look like wood possibly instead of obviously a racetrack. <laughs> I didn't want anybody to be able to tell that it was a racetrack. Like literally as soon as I was done with this, this um, DIY, I took pictures of it and sent it to my best friend and was like, okay, tell me what this is made out of because it's just so stinking neat. Like, I love this. <laughs> so, like I said, I took a baby wipe and just went back and wiped it off. I wanted just a little... I wanted a lot of the um, antique wax to be down in the cracks. And then I just wanted a little bit of it to be kind of on the solid surfaces or whatever. You'll be able to tell when I'm completely done just exactly how I did it. But I just added plenty to it and then went back and wiped it off. It would kind of just fall into the cracks where I wanted it. Now I did take my brush and what was left on it and add it to our little wooden plank that we got. This is actually a sign from Walmart. They're like $4.98 I believe. Pretty good size. I mean it's a decent size. I'm not sure exactly what the measurements is on it but um, it's a good size. But I did go around the edges of it with the um, antique wax and then also through the middle because that's going to be on the bottom of our lantern. So, if you didn't know by now, we're making a lantern. <laughs> I gave it away. Anyways, so I took my baby wipe and just went back and wiped back off what I had put on there. So that it was just on there enough that it's going to match the racetrack pieces. But it's not taken away from that, you know, white weathered wood because I really wanted that to still, you know, kind of shine through. That's why on the racetrack pieces, I took my baby wipe and wiped it to the point that you could still see the white paint, you know, because I wanted it to kind of both go in, in together. So, like I said, those two pieces, that looks perfect together. Then I'm going to take the finial knob and we're just going to add our antique wax just like we did to the other pieces. And then I'm going to take my baby wipe and wipe it right back off. Super simple. And this turns out so stinking pretty. All right. Now, I have got my Starbond multi-purpose, media, multi-purpose, let me try to say that again, <laughs> medium adhesive and also the accelerator. So, what I did was put the um, glue on the end of the racetrack and then I, sp I sprayed the wooden piece with my accelerator and then just Pop that racetrack right down in there. So I just kind of butted it up against the corner. Super simple. It sticks immediately. That accelerator is just fantastic. It literally makes the glue turn into like a hard plastic. So it's going to stick. I mean, it's there. Once you put it down, it is there. <laughs> so I just, like I said, added my glue to the end of the racetrack, then sprayed the wood with the accelerator, and then just popped my racetrack right down in the corner, as close to the corner as I could possibly get it. I would just hold it in place for a minute, let that dry. Now we're going to add the finial cap. Literally just putting some glue on it. Add my um, accelerator straight to the racetrack. Now, when I when this was done, this is we're through making it. I actually took some greenery and also some um, fall candles and just placed those inside here. And that's all I did to this, y'all. And it is beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. And you would never know that it was a racetrack. I did have to take my paintbrush and go back over a couple spots that had kind of messed up where I was touching them. But y'all, this is done. It's gorgeous.
So excited about this next one, y'all. So I have got this little sign that I picked up at the Dollar General store for $4. <clears throat> Believe I got it last year on clearance, like after season. So I probably got it for 50 or 75% off. I've got a wreath form from the Dollar Tree and then also three of these adult size uh, hula skirts from the Dollar Tree. Now, first thing I did was just get my hula skirt out. I'm going to separate it out a little bit. I'm just going to take a portion of it cut it off. We're just going to separate it out. And I believe I got f like four or five sections like this right here, that size out of each hula skirt, because I believe it was 10 altogether. I think I want to say I got five out of one of them and four out of the other, which means I just went a little bigger with the other side. But anyways, um, it was just the right amount though. It was perfect. I only used two of the hula skirts though. So I tightened it up at the top where the twine was and then I taped it down to my table so that I could just simply braid it. And I did it in kind of a loose braid because I wanted it to be like, once you put it on the wreath form, I wanted it to still be kind of, you know, kind of bulky, kind of chunky. This turns out so stinking cute. Oh my gosh, y'all. So in love with this one. So like I said, I just braided it down. And then when I got to the end, I would wrap it with my masking tape and then snip off the excess. So simply braiding it down to the end, tape it off, snip off the excess. And I did this, like I said, it was nine or 10 of them that I ended up making just like this. So I just put on a good YouTube show and got to braiding. <laughs> I took my wreath form and completely wrapped it in my masking tape. One, because I would have something to glue my uh, hula skirt to, and two, because it's pretty close to the same color as the hula skirt. So if for some reason any part of this showed, it would be the same color as the, the hula skirt, or pretty close. But what I did was just add some glue to the wreath form and then begin to lay down my braids. So like I braided that first one to the top, kind of close to the outside, because I knew I was gonna come back in, you know, with another one and get around the center portion of it. So I started with the outside, just simply gluing it down. And I just continued this process all the way around the wreath form. What I wanted to do was lay down my, uh, my first set of braids. So I would have like four of them laid down that's going to be the, you know, bottom of this, this piece. Then I took the pieces that were going to go on top of that to make it more full and like bulky. And when I would start or end with those pieces, I would actually tuck those in the braid. That way you couldn't see where, you know, one started and one ended or one ended and one started, however you say that. <laughs> Y'all know what I meant. <laughs> Anyways, I didn't want you to be able to see any kind of seam or where any of this was. I wanted it to just look like it was just completely wrapped in this big old, you know, just set of of um, rope or whatever you want this to, to look like. But I think this is beautiful. It really turns out great. I'm super proud of it. Um, I actually had started out trying to wrap it around and around and around and around, you know, like that, like tuck it around and around and around. And it just didn't look right. So that's what caused me to decide to actually put it or, you know, on it this way to use the whole piece. Anyway, so once I got it like I wanted it, I took my little sign and I'm just going to add some hot glue to the back. Super simple, just going right around the edge, and then I'm just going to pop it down right in the center of this um, wreath form. I then began placing my uh, greenery in, or well, my florals. So I started out with the greenery, the lamb's ear, and I just kind of tucked it right inside the braid. Very simple. It literally slid right down inside that braid. It felt very secure. I knew it was going to stay in there. You could just tell that it was, you know, good and secure in there. Uh, once I finished the greenery, though, and started going in with the flowers, I realized that it was way easier just to hot glue them into place. So that's what I did with them. I, I just snipped them off right at the edge of the, the bloom itself. And then I just hot glued that particular piece down into my, my wreath. 
I use some of the new picks that they've got out at the Dollar Tree that I absolutely love, and this turns out stunning. So for this one, I've got last year's farmer's market calendar. I'm going to use that little small pumpkin picture there. I have got some uh, ribbon that came from the Dollar Tree and also one of them came from Hobby Lobby. And then I've got one of these wood blocks that came from the Dollar Tree. I'm also going to be using some beads. And now I get my beads off of Amazon. It's just a better deal very good price. I will definitely leave a link in the description box for those beads. So the first thing I did was just add half of my beads. I think I had 20 or 25 beads, something like that. So I added half of them to an old coffee mug. And then, then I added in some of the pumpkin chalk paint by Waverly. I shook it up a little bit and then realized like, oh crap, I forgot the water. So <laughs> I went and grabbed my, my water bottle Added in a couple squirts of the water, not much, just a little bit, just enough to get that uh, paint, you know, kind of moving around good. Shook them around, then poured them out and took a paper towel and I'm just going to kind of squish at them with the paper towel. Just kind of dabbing them, getting the excess paint off. And this way, it, it's kind, they're kind of stained orange. Instead of like painted orange, they look more stained. You can still see some of the wood grain through the bead. Now, once I got my beads ready, I've got those set to the side. They're drying. I'm going to take our little wood block and some washi tape, and we're going to tape this off and actually do a buffalo check pattern on the top of this. So this was super, super simple, but I'm going to tell you exactly who I learned how to do the buffalo check um, painting from, and that is Whitney from Whiskey and Wit. Y'all, she's got the buffalo check painting down to an art. <laughs> I mean, she knows exactly what she's doing. I will leave one of her videos linked below so that y'all can check her out because she's amazing, first of all. But she's definitely got the buffalo check down. So once I had my, my first set down, I just taped it off horizontally and painted my lines in with a real light gray color. I then go in with my washi tape once again. And I've got an extra piece there. You see that I keep laying an extra piece down. And that is just so that I can make sure that I keep my lines very crisp, very straight. Everything's in order. I just use that extra piece there just to make sure that I've, I'm getting everything straight. So like I said, I just taped it off. Now we're taping it off vertically this time. And we're going to go in with that same gray paint and paint in those lines. Super duper simple. Now, don't do like me and pull all your tape off. Because once I did, I realized, oh crap, that's not what I was supposed to do. <laughs> so I put it all back on. So leave it. Leave it alone. After you do your second set, leave it alone. Then go back in with some more washi tape and put it over the lines that are lighter. You could actually, maybe on video you can't see it, but when it, in real life you can totally see where those lines are a little lighter. You're going to leave that on there and then paint it with a darker color. So I went in with my chalkboard uh, chalk paint black and just painted those little sections in. Then you peel it all off and check it out. Ah, oh, I love it. I love it. So simple. All right. Now, when it comes to the calendar, I just simply cut out my little pumpkin picture. Now, this is the one that's on the back of the calendar. Just cut it out. Tried to make it really, really straight. I tried to get all my lines really straight. I'm taking some of that Aileen's Tacky Glue once again, and I'm just going to add that directly to the back of that piece of paper and then pop that dude in the center of my little chunky block. So stinking cute. Ugh, so stinking cute. All right, now, 
I added some masking tape to the end of my twine. I've got some twine here that came from the Dollar Tree. And y'all, y'all probably seen this a million times on this channel. But all I'm going to do is simply string it through my block. I'm then going to snip that off and actually tape up those two pieces into one. That way I can now string my beads. Super simple. You just want to get a point on the end of your um, twine and then you can string your beads. As I've seen some people do it with hot glue too, but I just find it to be just as easy to do with the tape. Now, I took my block and I wrapped it with my ribbon. I wrapped it probably, I don't know, six or eight times, pulled that off, got my, got my little loops all nice and even. I pulled them out straight, got everything even. I'm then going to snip that off. We're making a tassel. So I took some twine and I tied it in the very top of this uh, set of loops. So it's tied at the very, very top. You're then going to tuck your finger in the middle of those loops at the top and then pull your two pieces of twine through that top. So I hope that I, I hope that y'all can see what I'm doing. This is very hard to explain. <laughs> Hopefully you can see what I'm doing though. So once I got those two pieces pulled through, I tied in a knot at the very, very top. Just tied it off, snip that off, and then you're going to snip open your loops. So the loops at the bottom, you've got those snipped open. And I just go back and kind of trim mine just so that everything's even. And that was it. This was so simple and it is so stinking cute. Ah. my favorite actually. So I've got these two sets of twine and I've also got a few pieces of lamb's ear. This is strictly just the leaves. And then I've got a branch from my yard <laughs> and my uh, miter shears. Now my miter shears did not cut that branch. So I actually had to take it out back and cut it with my saw. I took those two sets of twine and just simply opened them up. As you can see there, I then took the center where it was like tied together with the twine. Now this is the, the wired twine. And I just simply wrapped that around the other one. So you're making a ball with your twine. This is so stinking cute, y'all. All right, so I then added a little bit of hot glue to my stem here, popped it in. I'm gonna add a little bit of glue to the leaves. Glue, I glued two of them together, actually, and then glued it down inside there. So stinking simple. I saw these on Pinterest, and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to make a set of these because they're so stinking cute. So I, then, I wanted one smaller, so I actually wrapped it around this paint can here. And then when I pulled it off, it was still, it wasn't as small as what I was wanting it. So I ended up just wrapping it around my hand, actually. So I just wrap it directly around my fingers. I wanted one a little smaller than the other one. Tucked it in into the middle of it so that it would hold it together. Just like so. Super simple. I'm going to take my other side. Now I already had it wrapped. And it's literally the size of my fingers. Wrap it around the center so that it'll stay. And then I'm going to open it up. Super duper simple, y'all. Open up the other one and then tie them together with the, the twine that was on the inside. So easy. And then now we've got a little baby one. <laughs> How cute. I added in a stem 
and a leaf for this one. Now, the leaf I did have to cut down because it was a little big, like, compared to the size of the little pumpkin. So, I did cut it down some and then glue it in. And then that's all I did to these. These are darling. got four of these messenger bags that come from the Dollar Tree. They're burlap. Four of the signs from the Dollar Tree. And then I've got the letters that spell out the word fall that I picked up at Hobby Lobby for like two or three dollars a piece. Now, I started out by taking my pictures and I pulled off all the embellishments that were on the front, pulled the um, picture out of the frame because I wanted to paint the frame by itself. And all I did to paint these frames was I took a chip brush and a little bit of ivory chalk paint and I just simply dry brushed. No major painting, totally messy, just go at it. Simply dry brushed these frames and they turned out fantastic. Now, uh, when it comes to the messenger bags, I just opened them up, took my scissors and kind of found where the seam met the side of the um, handle. And I just cut right smack in the middle of that. And then I just pulled. And because it's burlap, obviously it just frayed out. And so it opened the bag right up. And that's what I was needing it to do. I wanted to be able to use the front part of this bag. Like where the print is on there. I thought it was so perfect for fall. Got that orange color in it. And I just love it. So... I did turn the pictures around to the back side because they were already brown, obviously, <clears throat> and it was just easier than having to go through and paint because where the wording and the roses were on the front side of those signs, that was going to show through behind my burlap. So, it was just as simple to flip it over and use the back side of the sign. Now, I did have to take my X-Acto knife and open up the top of the sign so that the, the front piece of that bag would be big enough to cover the entire sign. I then simply slipped the back into the burlap, popped that back right into the frame, and voila, now we've got it. Perfect. Oh, perfect. Okay. I even clapped. Did you see that? I even clapped. I was so excited. <laughs> now, I took my X-Acto knife and trimmed off any excess that was around the, the edges and all. And this is what we wanted. I wanted it just like that so that my letters would fit perfectly inside there. So, I just continued this process for all four bags and all four frames. I went through, opened each bag up, took my X-Acto knife, opened up the tops of each bag, flipped over my signs, placed that burlap in the sign, and then closed it up in the frame. Now, I laid out all of my, my frames. We've got all those ready with the burlap in them. Laid out my letters, and then I began to hot glue those letters into place. Y'all, this is so stinking cute. This would be so pretty like on a mantle or just somewhere like that. I think it would be gorgeous. Now, I had the backs to some old picture frames that I had probably used for something completely different. <laughs> and I saved these just for this purpose so that I could take that particular piece, glue it onto something else, and then now you've got a stand where it will actually sit up like a picture. Totally perfect. It's worked out. Just hot glued them. Just added some hot glue to the back of that. Pop that dude right down in place. And now you've got a stand. I continued this process for the other two. And y'all, this was so stinking simple. And it is so pretty.
So for this one, I have got five of these little pumpkins that come from the Dollar Tree. Now, I thought I had six. I originally was going to do this with six of them, but I ended up only being able to find five. So I took some celery and also cashew colored chalk paint and I painted these pumpkins. I painted three of them with the celery and then two of them with the cashew. And both of those paints are Waverly chalk paints. Um, I flipped them over, took the sticker off the back painted the back side so they were solid. I then took them out and cut each one in half. I just laid them on my saw and cut them all in half. Now, I should have left one of each color whole, but I got a little saw happy and just cut them all in half. <laughs> so, I had to glue one of them back together to start this process, but that was okay. No big deal. You're never going to know it. Not a big deal. So, glued one together. I then took another piece and glued on the back side of that, just right in the center. Super simple. These are so super simple. Now, I will tell you though, I tried to distress these with some sandpaper. Like I went and, and tried to distress the edges with some sandpaper and the orange from the original color like showed through. So I end up distressing them with some antique wax, but you'll see that here in just a minute. But I just wanted to let y'all know that I did try to use some sandpaper and that did not work out too well. Now I took my remaining pieces that I had of the, the celery color and I just added some hot glue to the very edge of them so that I could place that inside two of the pieces that were already glued together. So as you can see there, we've got it together. I just glued the other one the same exact way as I did the first one. Of course, we only had four pieces for it. I then took the original stems that were on these pumpkins and I glued three together for one pumpkin. And then I glued the other two together for the other pumpkin. And then we're gonna go, we're gonna actually take those and add some twine and just wrap it around them. I just added a little hot glue and then wrapped these up with some twine. Super simple. That twine also came from the Dollar Tree. So this is like a solely Dollar Tree um, DIY here. <laughs> and it turns out so, so stinking cute. So I just glued those on, glued that right into place. Pop that down right in the center of my little pumpkin that I've made. Did the same thing for the other one. Just wrapped my twine around it and then popped it right down in the center. I added in some um, greenery that I had on hand. Just some eucalyptus leaves that I had. I just glued those to the side. I then took some of this uh, wired jute ribbon or jute and wrapped it around a marker and then glued that on there. So it would kind of look like a vine. Super cute, super duper simple. Just cut that off, add a little hot glue, glue it right to my little pumpkin. Super simple, guys. This was such an easy DIY, and they turn out so stinking cute. I did take that antique wax, like I was telling y'all from before, and I dry brushed it around the outer edges of each of my little uh, pieces here to my pumpkins. And then I also took it and kind of ran it down the middle of the center there of each little um, side that we had. Super simple. I think y'all can see what I'm doing better than I can explain it probably. <laughs> y'all, these are so, so cute though. So easy to do too. Super simple. Check them out. Oh, I love them. I'm in love. two of these containers that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. Now, you can get these usually in the party section pretty much all the time. And then I also had another container that was made similar to those that I just had on hand. 
And then I've got some finial caps that I picked up at Walmart. I'm going to be using cashew, pumpkin, and moss Waverly chalk paints. And I just poured those out into one of the Dollar Tree trays. Now, you can usually find those trays over in the makeup section. But I keep them on hand to paint with. I think they're perfect for painting. Anyway, so I painted each of my containers with the individual colors. And I did have to go through and give probably two or three coats on each one just to get it, you know, totally solid, completely painted. Top to bottom, just painted those, super simple. I'm then gonna take those finial caps and I just pulled them out, figured out which one that I wanted to go where because they were different sizes in that package. Glued those with hot glue to the very top of my containers. Now, at this point, you can probably tell that we're making more pumpkins. Lord have mercy, knows we need pumpkins, okay? <laughs> so, Added some um, lamb's ear also to my little pumpkins. Just cut it off, added some hot glue, and popped it right in. I did that to all three of my little pumpkins that we're making. I then took some of this natural raffia that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to take it, make a simple shoestring bow. Just a regular O, simple dimple, simple bow. Nothing fancy. Trim it up a little bit, and we're just going to hot glue it right into place. Y'all, these were definitely very easy to make. Anybody could do this. These are super simple, and they are super, super cute. I just did the same thing for the other two. Added in the raffia, kind of made some a little longer than the other, but that's all I did to these, and they are so stinking cute. So for this one, I have got some of these um, fall picks that came from the Dollar Tree. These are the ones that have the little pumpkins made onto it. And I've also got some sunflowers that I picked up at the Dollar General store. And then I have a eucalyptus pick that I actually picked up at Walmart. I have some fencing pieces from the summertime. Those came from the Dollar Tree. I have some zip ties that I'm going to be using. Now, the first thing I did was lay out my fencing pieces and I put them like butt to butt. You can see there how they're placed. I then took my zip ties and I began to put this together. So I just zip tied it in a couple different places just to hold this all together. And y'all, this is such a simple DIY. This is super quick. This did not take me no time to do. Um, very, very simple, and it is gorgeous when you're done. So super simple and very inexpensive also. I just trimmed off my zip tie pieces. I then was able to actually take the ends of the fence and just wiggle them, and they popped right off. So I was able to get my fencing, you know, perfectly even, everything nice and neat. Now, once I had my fence together, I took some burlap ribbon, and I hot glued it to the fence. I totally recommend using some kind of finger protectors or something when you're using hot glue and um, burlap because obviously it's just going to come through the little holes in the burlap and definitely burn you. So I wrapped it around my, my fencing piece just right there in the center. I just needed somewhere to be able to place my florals and I thought that this would be the easiest way to you know connect those to that. I just trimmed all of my florals down. I then began to hot glue them into the burlap. Now, once we're done, this burlap will be completely covered. You'll never even know that that was there, but it's there just so we have something to actually put our florals on. I then started placing in the little fall picks that have the little pumpkins on it. I just placed those all around, added in my sunflowers, and that was it. This is gorgeous, y'all.
All right, y'all. That is it for today. Thank you so, so much for being with me. Be sure you like, share, comment, subscribe if you haven't, and y'all have a blessed day. Thank mm -hmm. you.